have this data in Microsoft Excel on the iPad, the first thing that I want to do is convert and edit. I want to make sure that I give this thing a meaningful uh, name. And I am going to call this Millican Oil Drop Experiment. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And I am going to save this in my Dropbox. So I'm saving this in my Dropbox. Okay, so save. And now it's time to process this information. So what we want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and open these. Okay. And since we want the velocity, um, I'm going to go ahead and process this this way. I'm going to go ahead and hide my X displacement, my Y displacement, as well as my Let's see if I can pull this over real quick. As well as my X velocity. So I'm just going to hide those columns. And what I want to do now is I want to select the information uh, that's going to give me a representation of the, um, of the velocity. And so the velocity that we want, we want a velocity that's not accelerating. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a certain range of data points. And I'm just... I'm looking at my time over here, my, not my time, but my velocity, my Y velocity, and I have one that's a negative 0 0.00511, and you'll see that most of the points are around that. If I keep going down, you'll see now we have 0 0.00077, and now you see we have a positive 0 0.0077 and a positive, and I'll just go ahead and graph these. Um, I typically would select what would be happening uh, up to this point. I'm going to insert and then hit charts and choose my XY scatter. And you'll see that the graph here is varying a little bit here. And let's see if we can understand why it's varying like that. But let's go ahead and go down and select some more points down here. So look at what happens as we select more points. We don't want these points, okay? That is when the particle is actually accelerating, appreciably accelerating. Here, the point, the particle is not appreciably accelerating. It's almost a flat line. So we're going to magnify that by eliminating these high points. And how do we do that? Well, we're just going to select our handle here, and we're going to remove those points. Okay, and when we remove those points, it looks as though this thing is varying a lot, but it's varying a lot between 0 0.0004, a negative 0 0.0004, and a negative 0 0.0006. So it's right around five. So we're going to take that data set, okay? So we see that that's number 19, and I'm just going to go ahead and, and I'm, I'm saying number 19, but it's on row 19. So what I want to do is I want to color these points, and I'm just going to give them a color of yellow, and um, I'm going to get rid of this chart because we're not going to need it. I'm going to use a different chart, and then we'll do the same thing for the next set of points, and we'll, we're just going to want to clean that up. So let's go right down here and collect all the positive points. Insert a graph. Now we could do this, and we can look at this information on, you know, look at our numbers if we wanted to. Uh, um, on the side here, you can see that we have a negative number here. We don't want that in there, so we're going to take that negative, uh, that negative number out. And it looks as though this point zero zero seven seven is pretty low compared to that. So I believe that the particle is still accelerating at that point appreciably. So we're going to remove that. And then if we go over a little bit here, you'll see that the particle is starting to accelerate again down here at 0 0.0089. Now, if you look at all of these points, it's around 0.13. So let me get rid of that 0.2, and you'll see our line is going straight across. So this is our second set of data points, and I'm going to go ahead and color that as well. I'm going to try to figure out how to color this without... Um, See if I can do that. That's going to be from this point down to this point. I believe that's what we had here. And I'm going to go ahead and change this color to yellow as well. So I can get rid of this graph. 
and you see that when I tap on the graph it's covering the selected region so I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that <clears throat> and then we'll do the same thing for the next set of points and again what we're trying to do is eliminate the acceleration so let me insert a graph again all right so you see that this graph has a couple of points way up here all right we're going to most likely get rid of those four points so it looks like it's two in the beginning and two in the end so i'll bring this down so it's from 34 to about 50. so what i'll do is i'll just go ahead and select 34 to 50 and color that yellow again get rid of this chart and so we have our third set of points now we need our fourth set of points and we're just going to go ahead and pick our points again we know that it's not going to be negative because this is going to be a rise velocity so let me go ahead and pick this and say insert our chart again and this is going to be a rise velocity and so that looks pretty decent <clears throat> I mean, I could go ahead and drop this down a little bit, maybe pick this up a little bit. Um, I could do it like that. It's still varying between 13 and 14. That's not bad. It looks like a parabola at this point. Um, I think I had better keep all of these points in here. Uh, yeah, it's varying between 0 0.0012 and 0 0.0016. Okay, I think that that'll do. So let me go ahead and grab all of that information. And we're just going to color that yellow as well. So now <clears throat> we have all of this information right here. The thing that we want to get rid of is we want to just go ahead and dress this up a little bit. But um, in the next video, I'll talk to you guys about how to actually fit your um, data, do a linear fit. Right now, we just selected this. Uh, we wanted to use this as a selection video.